I'm excited. I don't know about you. I wish the cameraman would be excited. And let's welcome to the stage our prophet Bishop Dalek Philippines. Hallelujah. Father, thank you for the blessing you give to us today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Right. This morning, I started sharing a little about faith as a defense. And I want to share just a few more because I've got a lot of chapters in my book. And so I'm going to share a couple more chapters with you. All right. Chapter seven. Your faith is your life. All right. Habakkuk chapter two and verse four. Habakkuk chapter 2. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright. When a soul is lifted up in pride, it's not upright in him. So, you must humble yourself. Don't lift up yourself. You'll be struck down. And the just shall live by his faith. Hebrews 10 verse 38. Verse 39. Now the just shall live by faith. If any man draw back. Draw back from living by faith. My soul shall have no pleasure in him. We are not. Of them who draw back. Unto perdition. Now. You see the road you are on. Serving the Lord. Keep going forward. Going back, going sideways, is often straight into perdition. So you've got to be careful that you don't destroy yourself from drawing back. Now, why do people draw back? Because they are trying to come out of something. And sometimes people are frustrated because they feel they are not happy or not fairly treated or there's some other problem. But one of the things you find out if you ever drive on a highway is that the way out of a highway, if you want to go off a highway, is not only back. Back is sometimes even more complicated. Going forward can still get you out. So if the highway you are on is a highway of problems, of difficulties. Going forward is actually a way out. If you keep going forward, you find out that you probably come out of what you are in difficulty with. So don't draw back. You know, if I'm in the ministry and I'm struggling with poverty, the way forward, the way out of the poverty is forward. The way out of the poverty is forward, not backward. Drawing back draws back to perdition. Okay? So if you are in difficulty in whatever thing you are in, let's say marriage, drawing back is likely to draw you out into perdition. Keeping moving forward is likely to take you out of the same difficulty. Yes. The weather is a little different. Just ahead. Just ahead. This is this sunny. Alright. Galatians chapter 2. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless I live. Yet not I. But Christ liveth in me. Notice. The life which I now live. In the flesh. I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Now, although the scripture, all through the scripture, it is clear that the life you live is the real revelation of your faith level. The life you live is a revelation of your faith level.
You, you didn't understand it? I should explain it. A person who throws himself into full-time business and occasionally gives an offering is at a certain level of faith. Another person throws himself into full-time business and regularly pays tithes reveals yet a higher level of faith. Did you get that? Yes. You throw yourself into business. Occasionally you give an offering to a church. It's a level of what you believe. Then another person throws himself into business and is regularly tithing. It shows it's a revelation of what he believes. It's a revelation of his faith. Many people think that to have faith is to simply confess that they possess many earthly possessions. I believe I have a car. I believe I have a Benz. I believe I have this. That is a warped and perverted understanding of what faith is. Faith is far more than your confession. Faith is your life. The life you are living. The life you live is the faith you have. The life I now live, I live by the faith. The life I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. What you do to someone who loves you shows what you believe. Amen. Amen. Now, if, the, if you live your life out in full-time ministry, it is because of the faith you have. So, your life reveals your faith. The life I now live, I live about. So, it's not, what is it? I believe I have a car. I believe I have this. I believe I'm this. I'm in America. I'm in Venice. No, that is not. Faith is your life. The chapter is called, Your Faith is Your Life. The just shall live his life by faith. The life I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So your life, your whole life is the greatest revelation of the things you believe. Are you getting me? So, if you live your life out as a missionary in a foreign country, it is because of the faith you have. You believe that eternity will reward you far more than any temporary rewards on this earth. If you live a life of doing earthly politics, it is because of your faith in politics and human achievements. If you live your life out as a businessman, it is because of your faith in money and earthly achievements. Your life reveals your faith. Your life is an expression of your beliefs. Look at your life. It's telling us what you believe. Look at your life. It's telling us what you believe. Yes. The life I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. The just lives by his faith according to his beliefs. And everybody does live by his beliefs. Are you there? What you do with your life reveals what you really believe in. If you continue to quarrel and harbor grudges, it is because of your beliefs in the way to rectify things. Your ability to forgive and to leave things to God reveals how much you believe in God and his word. Your whole life is an expression of your faith in God. If you live your life singing secular music to secular audiences, it is because of your beliefs. The life you live is an expression of your faith. Your life is your faith and your faith is your life. As Apostle Paul said, the life I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God. You know, I used to think that I was not a man of faith. This is one of my problems. 
Do you see? This verse has encouraged me that I'm a man of faith. Because I don't have these big testimonies that people have. Do you get it? Yeah. Wow, testimony that is a man of faith and power and all that. So I feel so ordinary. Do you get it? So I don't feel like, I don't feel that I'm a man of faith. But when I read this scripture, I realized that the life I'm living is the faith that I have. That is actually the faith that if I'm a man of what I am doing is shows my faith. Mm-hmm. And I think that I, I'm, I'm a man of faith when I look at my, the life I'm living. <laughs> yeah. So, faith will quench all attacks that are launched against you. Every power that has targeted you, the life you live which expresses your faith will block the enemy. You see, I should have been somebody leading an organization drowning in debt, drowning in financial struggles. But When God educated me in debt earlier on, I began to believe long ago that owing money was not even biblically uh, encouraged. And my belief has grown. And of course, more evidence has added to the small faith that I had. Now, the small faith that I had, I cannot boast that. You know, I thank God for people who hear from God in this great way and all that. I wish I had all these things too. But the the truth for me is that when I went to borrow money to build the church, they didn't give the Barclays Bank. They said that your church we cannot sell. High Street, it used to be Barclays, but that's the bank I went to, this, uh, the headquarters. I went to see the manager myself. I sat down, talked with him. I said, we need to borrow money to build the church at Collegono. He said, oh, uh, you, you, we cannot give loan to you, you know, because you cannot pay. And if you don't pay, we cannot sell your church. So that was the end. So it's not that like I had, I wish I had, I wish I had had a voice and all those things. You get it? But all that educated me still, because you don't have to only hear from a voice. You know, there's little experiences you are having in life can also, even films, when you watch films, films are some of the most educative things. Because most films are based on real life. If you want to know what's happening in the world, watch a film. I was once told by a spy, you know, one spy... I knew why we have spies in our church. So one spy was telling me once (laughs) that when you see a film, the technology that you see them using is a technology that is five years old, eight years old. It means that they've used it and it has grown so much that it's gone into the public domain. That's why it's coming to a film. And you see them all. So you see like a film like um, Enemy of the State. All those things are common things we have now. They know where you are, what you are doing, where you're going upstairs, when you're going downstairs. They, they know you are down, downstairs. Yeah. It's now true. They see your phone going up, you see it going downstairs, going up. Yeah. You say you're on the third floor, but you're on the fifth floor, and they can see that you are there. <laughs> because if your phone has gone upstairs. Yeah. <laughs> are you there? What was I talking about? You've forgotten. Yes. Yes. So I'm saying I learned from my experiences. God was educating me. All right? And now I began to believe the life I live blocked me from poverty. Can you imagine? Almost 100 nations, everybody is borrowing money. 
on my behalf. <laughs> Can you imagine it? <laughs> it's so serious. Yes, we have a hundred monthly payments of everything everywhere. No. When we don't have, we don't have. That's the faith I have. That is better to live without things than to have things that are not real. You owe on all the television you are watching is getting spoiled and you are owing. And by the time it's spoiled, you have not finished paying. So God has educated me and made me have some beliefs. Now, what has it blocked? Faith is a shield. It has blocked poverty. Yes. It's blocked poverty. We have missionaries in different countries. This morning, I remember some of our missionaries in a particular country. And I, I just checked to find out if they have cars. And, and I found that they don't have any, none of them have cars. So, I sent a message to my uh, lay missions board. I said, do I need cars for these people? I have not heard from them yet. I have to check my phone. I don't hold my phone all the time, so I'll find out maybe tomorrow if they have responded. Maybe they are even watching. <laughs> But if, if, they, if, if they can help, that would be great. If they can't help, then I said, we will just carry on. That's as we are. But what is the point of struggling to, to drive a car which you haven't finished paying for? Huh? What about if somebody bashes it? You have, to, you have to pay for the car you haven't finished paying, and then you have to pay for the repairs. Because brand new cars can also have bashes. So, the belief, and you see, I remember um, September 11th. I'm talking about how faith blocks fiery darts. Yeah. If you think Satan hasn't pointed his arrow, and these ones are, they are targeted, they are specific attacks based on where you are and who you are. It's, an arrow is like, it's, look at you, you, you are the one I want. targeted at you to wipe you out financially and in every way. Yeah. And so if you don't rise up and believe in the things that God is saying, you will never know what you are blocking by having faith. Some years ago, when the September 11th happened, September 11th, Yongicho dedicated our church in the last week of August. It was actually supposed to be September, but he came a little earlier. What you do? So we did it before, and then he left. He arrived, he got home, I think September 5, 6, then four days after this thing happened, September 11th. Now, there were about 5,000 planes in the sky, 6,000 planes flying in America at the time. They had to bring all of them to the ground. It was a whole thing. No plane was flying. They didn't know what was happening. Now, about September, maybe 20th, I had to travel. 11, 20. And I had to go to, I had to go to America because we had a camp. The same America. And then to Malaysia. And I was alone. Now, when I got there, I preached about, it was difficult for me to go. Trust me. You know, you are a man of God, but you are a man. <laughs> so to sit on the plane, I was equally frightened because people are sat on planes and they just bomb them all over the place. So, I got on the plane, this very frightening experience, 
flew into America. They were now giving plastic forks. No, no, whatever plastic forks. The searches were special, super special. And everybody had plastic for just a few days after. And I went to America and preached to them about my son. I, I, and I was preaching and I started to cry. The tears were in my eyes. I was crying. <laughs> and I preached that day. I, I said, you know, I've never spoken about mortgages and debts. But today, I'm good. I felt the Father's love for the people. The Father's what? Love for the people. So I decided to share. Because it's when a father loves you that he will share things. He, he would make himself vulnerable to you. Because by saying that, somebody can say all sorts of things. So I shared with them about debts, mortgages, what I knew. That's 20, 2001, 19 years ago. By that time, I, I had grown in my beliefs even more. When I left, when I say all, almost 100% of them totally disregarded all that I said. Yes. Not all, but almost all of them. They all went straight to do exactly the opposite of what I said. <laughs> some of them told me the details. So when you left, so we went to do this, we went to do this. As when you flew out, as I've risked my life on the September 11th aeroplane to come there. <laughs> yes. So, Sometimes the difficulties which we get into, but after that, it's not been so easy. It's not that easy. Few people can come up with extra money, even though they are living in America. Some of you are wondering why your relatives haven't come to visit you long ago that they went. But don't hear from them much. Western Union is working, the money can flow. It's not that easy. So, what I'm trying to say is that the life you live shows the things you believe. That says you are a man of faith, woman of faith. That's, I just want you to know that. As I confess, I believe this, I confess this, I confess this, I confess. Forget about that. Forget about that. I believe I have this. I believe I have that. Where did you learn this one? Even Kenneth Taking didn't do all those things. I believe I have this. I believe I Before he died, he published something. He said, look, people are misusing his faith message to, 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 to promote materialism. This is not what he, this is not what Kenneth Hagin Kenneth Hagin is a humble preacher who traveled and gave himself to encourage people to believe in God. So, brothers and sisters, the life you live shows the things you believe. Yes. One time I met a pastor friend of mine. We were in a dilemma. Something was happening. They were saying, is it right to, as it were, condone certain things or that the, pe the person or the Subject had to do with fathers or to honor the fathers or to condone certain things. Seem to condone or you're condoning it, but you are not commenting on it. As I discussed with this pastor, I realized that he also believed that if a father is doing something that you don't understand or you don't like or you even think it is wrong, it's not your place to correct your father. But God will correct your father. But a child should honor his father. That's all. And then leave the rest to God. As we talked, and I saw that that's what he believed more, I became closer to him. Wow. Yes. You are close to the person who has the same beliefs as you. Because when you all talk, you are all talking according to your combined beliefs. Show me your friend, I'll show you what you believe. 
Your chatting mate reveals your faith. So, better to be a man of faith and show me your life then I know that you are really a man or a woman of faith. When you see me paint ties from the time I was in lower six or from five till now, it shows you the faith that I have in God. That God has something to do with money. God has something to do with money. Kamara mashata balambara. So, your life is the greatest evidence of what you believe. Your life is what? The greatest evidence. Never try to speak much to change your life, what your life is showing. (laughs) Don't what? Waste your time trying to say things to cancel your life. Your life is speaking more The just shall live by his faith and the life I live, the life you live is far more than any words you give to justify, change, modify. So I live this way, but I believe this. No. Don't waste your time. Your life is your faith. Amen? Amen. So, What you believe, may may you live your life out, living your life, doing what you believe and serving God. And sometimes people live love God, but they don't have even the opportunity to do anything. Amen? Amen. Now, chapter 8. Faith is to predict. Predict things. Predict what? things. You see, why am I telling you to walk by faith? Because it blocks the works of the devil. It's, it is an unstoppable force that blocks Satan's wishes for you. Predict good things. Listen, as it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before whom he believed, even God, who quickened the dead and calleth those things that be not as though they were. Amen. Amen. Now, if God says that God calls things that are not as though they are, eh, and that is God's way of speaking, and you are a follower of God, and faith is to call the things those that are not as though they are. And without faith, you cannot please God. Then without calling those things that are not as though they are, you are not pleased, you cannot please God. Yeah. Without calling those things that are not as though they are, you, you will never please God. You never please God until you start calling those things that are not as though they are. Yes. Because God, who quickeneth the dead and calls things that are not as though they are. Now, one of the things I've, I've realized is that people cannot move themselves with the force of faith from a bad situation to a good situation. From the smallest thing in your life, apply your faith. And predict the end of battles and the end of darkness in your life. Declare and call things that are not as though they are in your battle of this life. I remember when I started playing golf, there are many times in great frustration, in great what? Frustration. I would leave the golf course. <laughs> yeah. In great what? Frustration. Especially on Mondays 
the greatest form of tiredness would overwhelm me. And I didn't even know that I was part of it. At a, at a point, I remember one day I just stopped and said, I'm going. It's too much. It's too much. But when I, one day I decided to use faith. Faith is partnering with the invisible. The invisible God to overcome the impossible. Hallelujah. You are partnering with God. You are predicting. You are speaking over things. And you are calling things that are not as though they are. And if God calls things that are not as though they are and to please God is to walk by faith. Then if you don't call things that are not as though they are, you will not be pleasing God. Think of your pornography. Something that is a spiritual. Let me show you why it's spiritual. Anything you can't stop. You ask yourself, a force beyond the natural, supernatural, is now involved in these videos. It's now involved in it. It can never be natural. It can never be. You cannot stop. You must now apply spiritual forces. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Kamaru satabara. Taribala bakashaba. You sit there and, and say you are using some principles you read on the internet to use psychological whatever to fight pornography. Something that you cannot stop. Eh? Start to declare I don't have a problem with pornography. You say it with your mouth. I don't have a problem. I don't even I am not even tempted. Start to call those things that are not as though they are. Marata morata marabeko tabara mandalaba. You are bound in adultery. Bound in adultery. Bound in fornication. You cannot stop. When this man comes, then what? Your witness comes. When you see the person. Somebody who should have been like a bamboo stick. Go to Ethiopia and see bamboo. It's used to prop up. But they don't use uh, scaffolding. They use bamboo. Nine story, ten, eleven stories, you see bamboo. But each floor is bamboo, bamboo, bamboo. They're casting up to ten floors. Yes. You should have been like a bamboo, but you are like spaghetti. Somebody wrote a song. Young girls are my witness. Kamara <laughs> bashapaya Young girls are your weakness. <laughs> Stay there and use psychology to overcome and see what will happen to you. Is it anything you can't stop? Look. The Bible calls something the spirit of whoredoms. The spirit of whoredoms. It's the spirit of fornication and adultery. The spirit of whoredoms. Whoredoms. An unclean spirit. It's unholy spirit. Unclean is unholy. 
Yes, the spirit of whoredoms. Yes. Mm. My people ask counsel at their stocks, and their staff declareth unto them, for the spirit of whoredoms has caused them to err. And they have gone out whoring after and from under their God, spirit of whoredoms. A supernatural fight. and you will not partner with an invisible force to fight something that is also equally invisible and powerful. Stay there and say you will not use faith. You are using psychology. Or because the person has traveled to Canada, that is why it has ended. What about if he comes back or she comes back from Canada after the pandemic? (laughs) They are going to begin season two. The spirit of whoredoms. Marito Ramasa Baramondele. Whatever you cannot stop, eh? faith is to predict it has ended. Predict it. Predict it because you know by the time you finish fulfilling it, it has destroyed you. You must call things that are not, you must use faith also. And as you even use faith, Ha! Ah, God himself will move on your behalf. Your marriage, that is not working. You have married to Jezebel. Every day you are under control. Yes. It is time to predict great things. It is time to be a faith Man, Amen. Amen. Do you believe it? Yes. Yes. So go out of here calling those things that be not. Call yourself something that be not. Say I am. Yes. My search for a husband has ended. You will really shout Amen. My search for a husband has ended. My loneliness has come to an end. What did I give you this morning about uh, uh, your, your dream? Like a dream of the night. My life is exploding into realms of unexplainable breakthroughs. Tamara Bashatala Babana. Yes. Let me tell you something. Don't wait to get to heaven to find out the spiritual forces that are working behind things. Behind things. Behind things. Behind character. What you call personality disorder. Now, in medicine, I was speaking to someone who is doing psychiatry. And he was telling me something. He said, all these mental diseases, schizophrenia, the big ones, the Mercedes Benz of psychiatric illness, Schizophrenia, the BMW of my psychiatry, depression, and these big ones. They all have tablets you can take. But the personality disorders, there is no cure. No cure. How they are, that's how they are. You struggle with a monster. No change. No change. Most people are married to, to personality, or not most people, a lot of people are married, or I should say, some people are married to people. <laughs> Unless you quote me. Narato <laughs> Rada! Hey, 
<laughs> Some people, they know themselves. Nakabora mandalaba. Mahabaronele basamandali baba. An incurable and unchangeable personality disorders. Different things. I am charging you to walk by faith. Walk by faith. Believe in God. Yes. When our church had no cars, the church was so small that we had to make curtains to cover the windows on the sides and we stay inside with the heat because people passing by could see that nobody had come to church. Where my sound system that I bought as a medical student has become the church's loudspeaker that is used for church. And nobody had a car till my father bought a car for me. And I was the one man car owner in the church. One day I went out and I knelt down on the roadside and I laid hands on the road. And I said, there are cars all here. After. There are cars all here. All here. Makaro Madalaba Shibaba. Yes. Calling those things that be not as though they are. Years ago, I made a banner. I made a banner at Kolegono. And people challenged me for the banner. Do you know what was written on the banner? You'll be surprised. You'll be surprised. Shall I tell you what I wrote on it? To put at the front of the church? Shall I tell you? And people challenge me. Yes. Shall I tell you what I wrote? The mega church. Hey. And people said, no. How can you write the mega church? You should write a mega church. Like, mega. not the mega church. You should write a mega church. Yes. Marco Rabilo. Remo Lababalo Kabara. The mega church. When we called our church Lighthouse Chapel International, I said that we shall be uh, mega church. Yeah, the mega church. Yes, yes. Then when I called the church Lighthouse, I said that so it will be an example and a source of direction. That's a lighthouse. It gives direction to be an example to other churches. Rambo, 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 Rambo. Hey! That collect those things that be not. As though, as though, as though they are. Makolima, brado, hosim, belebeka. Things that are not the case. But you call them that way. Mahoba, Ramandala, Baba. You stay there using psychology. When we are talking about faith in God, without faith, it's not possible to please God. The just shall use his faith to live in this world and stop all fiery darts and attacks of the enemy. Makarumba Rendo Rambo Samala. One day I saw some enemies. I said, ah. You are finished. You are what? Finished. And truly, they were all finished. Minky Takuma. Hey. Dombra Satalbo Shabaraba. Your life on this earth is a continuous battle. Blocking and dodging evil. Overcoming obstacles. Amen. Subduing kingdoms, Amen. quenching the violence of fire. That's faith. And how do you use faith? Your faith is your life. Your faith is obedience, and obedience is faith. 
And faith is to call like God things that are not the case at all as though they are. When I say you are crossing 70 with ease, it's to call things that are not as though they are. As though they are. Marindo Ramba Rambo Lebakabara Balanda Rabara. All threats against your life are blocked by your declarations and by the words you speak. You know, one day I was with a man of God and uh, suddenly he he said something. Uh, Somebody said something and then he started to speak for a long time. Yes. (laughs) Speaking words, a lot of words. So after I was quiet and he said after he finished declaring so many things, he said the fact that it has occurred to somebody, you see, to say that thing about him, that it has occurred to someone to even suggest that he will be dead or that something will happen. He said, it's a thought that's in the system. And he has to cast that imagination down. You sit there and let imaginations and thoughts be moving around without Countering those thoughts and those ideas. Hey, he spoke against all the just like why are you are you so reactionary? He said, no, no, the fact that it has occurred to somebody, I don't like it. It's a thought in this casting down imaginations that people are having. So faith is to call those things. That are not as though they are. Chapter 9. I told you. Just a couple of chapters. Faith is to stagger not. Don't stagger. Don't stagger. Don't stagger. Don't stagger. stagger. You see, don't let it sound too big for you. Yes. Romans 4.20, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Amen. Amen. There are many big things that are said, and you must believe. Sometimes I have some of the young guys, and I say to them, all my Bible students, and all the guys around us, I say, you are going to be a great man of God. I tell them, you are going to be a great man of God. God is going to use you. If you listen to the message, you see that I'm always telling you, you are going to make it. And they are making it. Yes. Now, when I see the churches they are building all over, I'm just excited. He started not. You know, one day I heard Bishop Oedipo say something fantastic. He said, when he started... The ministry at the very beginning when they were in the largest um, grass cathedral what grass the cathedral was made of grass his church was made of grass no blocks grass dried grass or gra- I don't know if it was dried but grass he said God told him. And he said it then. At the base of this ministry will be a church which seats 50,000 people. This was, yes, at the base of his ministry will be a church which seats 50,000 people. Don't stagger. Don't stagger. Don't stagger. Do you know what is 50,000? And that is when he was in a grass hut. Yes. And he said, at the base of this ministry will be a church with 50,000 people. Long before. He staggered not at the promise.
promise of God. God has great promises for you, for your life. The devil has a lot of bad things also in store. Yes. But don't stagger at the great words. When you have messages, we don't have things to do. Become excited. Like there's nothing. Do this. Number two. Do this. Number three. Do this. Become happy because predictive yes. declarations are happening and you must receive and believe. Yes. What great things has God told you? What great things? I remember when I was in France one time I was watching some videos and praying on my bed and I, I believe I believe I receive I have received an anointing for healing. Don't stagger. Don't stagger. Don't stagger. Don't stagger. Yes. Yes. I'm walking in it. Yes. I'm walking in it. The last time I was in Dakar, they spread a rumor in the city. They said a grand marabou has come to town. I was even at a museum during the crusade and they were talking. Said, there is a grand marabou. That is a big magician. That, that is me. I was the grand magician they were talking about. Rama Katora Baba. Miracles. All types of miracles. We were surrounded by no less than 10 mosques. If you look at the pictures, you see the mosque all around. We were as if, it, as if that was the decoration for the crusade. Rambo, Rambo, Rambo. <laughs> but you see, the miracles were happening. Every religion likes healing. Ah. Every religion likes healing. Yeah. Every religion likes healing. Ezekiel chapter 37. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, Oh Lord, thou knowest. You see, you must never make the mistake of saying, Oh, how? No. You know, say, you know everything. You have even praised God. <laughs> you know everything. Whatever is big to you that you have said and declared. It has happened already. I declare it so in Jesus' name. And again he said unto me, prophesy upon the bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. That saith the Lord God unto these bones, I will cause breath to enter into you and you shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you and will bring flesh upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know I am the Lord. Kambo, Rambo, Kama, Kubara, Kamaloba. What is impossible to you? Eh? What is what? Impossible to you is happening practically in your life in Jesus name. You know, if you don't ever come to something impossible then you are not part of this world. Recently, the Holy Spirit woke me up and told me something. I'm not going to tell you if you think I'm going to tell you what it is. You two have yours. <laughs> but it was quite impossible sounding. Every day, I rack my brains trying to think, how would this thing be possible? Last night, I was, I was trying to sleep. And I, was, I kept on thinking about how is it possible? How, 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 how? Do you see? Don't stagger. Can these dry bones live? Satan is the author of discouragement. Isaiah 42. Beautiful. Behold my servant, whom my elect in whom my soul delighted, I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. He shall not cry, nor lift up, as you're not going to be proud. But look at verse 4. He shall not fail, nor be discouraged. 
until he has set judgment in the earth and the isles shall wait for his law. Don't be discouraged. You will not fail until you have finished your ministry. Satan is the author of discouragement. So keep listening to messages. When you listen to messages, you feel like you are in heaven. After church, you wonder where your problems went for that short period. Have you not noticed? After church, they seem to return. Even, even sometimes when I've not been feeling well, sometimes I have to preach, I don't feel well. During the preaching, the sickness goes. After the preaching, and after that, it's like the thing just descends back. There is some power in the word of God and in the presence of God that suspends all negativities of your life. He shall not fail. He shall not be discouraged. So I see you making it in the ministry and you are going to be a great blessing to many. Finally, faith loves preparation. Faith loves what? Preparation. Right? The United States Coast Guard, they have a motto, Semper Peratus. Semper Peratus. It means always prepared. Always what? Prepared. God sent me to tell you, prepare for a great, good thing that is coming into your life as you serve him. Prepare for something greater than you have known up to now. Some few people that believe will receive it and the others will receive something else. In Hebrews 11, by faith, Noah being warned of God, of things not seen, moved with fear and prepared an ark. Start preparing, brother. Start preparing, sister. Those of you who've been listening to preaching about marriage, start preparing for having the best marriage ever. Start preparing for what? Best marriage ever. Ever. I had one man of God say, if Max were being given for marriage, he would get 99%. Start preparing for your 99% marriage. Faith loves preparation. Because faith believes and has not staggered at the promises. Start preparing for better days. Amen? Amen. You believe it? Yeah. Yeah. Hitch free marriage. What? Hitch free marriage. (laughs) Sister, are you listening to me? Yes. Sister, are you listening? Your marriage is going to be the best. Prepare. By faith. One of the God ever to live on this earth, he prepared. You can imagine how long it would take to build an ark. He was preparing for a long time for something beautiful. Wow. Prepare. Prepare. Whatever you go through is preparing you for that day. One day a carpenter came to me and gave me a prophecy. Yes. A carpenter. Yes. A quiet guy. He came up to me and he gave me a prophecy. He said he had a dream about something about to, to do with our church. That was many years ago. I just put it in my heart. So, oh, thank you. And I'm watching it. Sometimes when I watch the pictures we showed during the offering, I remember him. Yeah. I said, I'm standing. He's alive. 
I'm standing here and I'm watching a church that I'm building in Mozambique, in here, in Kigali, in Lusaka, in Dar es Salaam. It's like as if Africa has become a crowd to me. Rando, Rando, Rando. Amara. 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 Judea has met with Jerusalem. (laughs) Semper Paratus. Men without faith are men without preparation. Men without faith are men without preparation. You are becoming a bamboo. Hard and stiff. Don't let your experiences go without the appropriate lessons being learned. You are being hardened. You are being strengthened. You are being corrected. You are being prepared to carry a heavy weight. God loves you. That is why he's allowing you to go through certain things. He's preparing you to carry a heavy, heavy weight. Yes, heavy weight. That's why Paul said, Upon me, which cometh daily, the care of the church. Daily it comes on me. Daily it comes on me. Daily it comes on me. in the ministry. There's pressure in the ministry. Paul said, We were pressed without measure. We despaired even of our lives. We wanted even to die. But God consoled us and comforted us. Hallelujah. Men without faith are men without preparation. Prepare for the thousands of years that are coming in eternity. Eh? Death will not take you by surprise. You'll be ready for eternity because you are a man of faith. Amen. Are you glad to be a man of faith? I'm preparing for eternity. My whole life is preparation for eternity. Yeah. My whole life is preparation for eternity. I'm preparing to be out of this world. I'm preparing not to exist here. All my life is preparing to not exist. To not be around. To not talk. To not be in the system. This is all I'm preparing for. I'm preparing to stand before Jesus. Listen to whatever he will have to say about me. I've been asking him what is his opinion, how he feels. It's all I'm doing. I'm trying hard. By faith, Noah prepared an ark. <laughs> Are you there? Beautiful. Whatever God is going to do. Get ready. And Abraham gave all that he had to Isaac. Genesis 17 verse 21. My covenant I will establish with Isaac. When God told Abraham, Isaac is the one. The Bible says Abraham gave all that he had to Isaac. You see, when you know what God wants to do, you prepare for it and you do what you can do. The rest is up to God. Because when Abraham is gone, what's going to happen to us? Isaac, Isaac had only one, one child. You know, he said he'd be a father of nature. You would have thought that Isaac you know, is going to really like, he's going into like no family planning type of. But you see, it was Isaac. You see, he couldn't also have children. Yes. Remember? Rebecca. Yes. So you were, she was barren. You would have thought that it was going to just flow like the babies would be flowing. You know, sometimes a woman who has one child 
and she really wants the child to give birth. It's like give birth to 10. I know one lady, she had one daughter and she, she, had, she made her daughter give to 10. Hey! hey! Ten, 10 girls to counteract the one. Rambo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife. She was also by the father of nations, grandchild. It was also not working. <laughs> Faith calleth those things that be not as though they were. And you only please God when you call the things that are not as though they are. Prepare. Abraham prepared for the greatness. He said, Ah, it's Isaac. He sucked all his children and gave everything to one of them. Because he really believed God. You see, your life is your faith. What you do with your life is just what you believe. Yeah. So you, you are going to be a great person. Yeah. Yes. That is why you wouldn't want to become an addict to pornography at this stage. Right. Or an addict to the spirit of whoredoms at this stage. Because when you are at a certain level, you don't need a spirit of whoredoms. Unclean spirits are unholy spirits. If you don't know, I'm telling you. Unclean is unholy. Rambo. (laughs) Hey! Are you listening to me? You know, we can talk about faith till tomorrow morning. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> Faith is to make adjustments according to the things you believe. Make adjustments. Yes. It's to make adjustments. Abraham says, Hey, you, you are my children. Have you seen this town? Go there. You, come. Take 5,000. Travel. I love you. You, come. Take 2,000. Go. Your mother is at that place. He sucked all of them. (laughs) Because when people die, people change. The person you think loves you, the day you die, you see how your family is. That's why people don't trust their in-laws. The day he is gone or she is gone. That's when you see. Even you see it from the will. That when the father died, you see that as an in-law, you were not mentioned. In the will, although they were say, don't call me father-in-law, call me father. Call me father-in-law. Call me father. All You're all my children. <laughs> Don't say daddy-in-law. No. <laughs> Call me daddy. Kamarogasa. <laughs> so Abraham knew that when I die, this will be different. So I better mobilize. And you remobilize. So you, you are in charge. Isaac. He gave all he had to Isaac. Faith makes adjustment. What adjustments have you got to do in your life? Based on your beliefs, wow. do the adjustments. Wow. Yeah. Based on your, adjust- on your beliefs. That's why I form denominations. I'm trying to separate the church. To grow separately. Why, why divide when we can move into good sections? Hmm? Would you like to See a meat divided nicely with a knife, or you want gems to come from within and then the whole meat will swell up and open in a funny way? No. We are exempted from the flies in Egypt. When the flies invaded Egypt, except Goshen, who flies? Rambo, Rimba, Rambo, Rambo. Fly speaks of corruption. You will never be corrupted. It will not be spot. 
Ramaloga Rabashuba. In the name of Jesus. Finally or finally, faith is to fight. Fight the good fight of faith. Are you ready to fight? Oh, yes. Yes. Fight the good fight. I'm ready to fight on. I'm ready to fight on. Hmm? I'm ready to fight on. Don't be tired of fighting. We are in a war. And there will always be something to fight. If somebody wants to make himself something to fight, you are welcome. You are welcome. We are here for fighting. We are here for fighting. Rando, rando. Rando, God's power is flowing in your life. Good things are happening. And I declare great blessings and prosperity over your life. In Jesus name. Every standing. Now. Many years ago. I signed my signature and one of my mockers look at my signature and said, what is that? Is it a crab or whatever scratching? And I said, it's a millionaire signature. Mundo. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> monkey face I said it's a millionaire signature what do you mean and I maintained it from a teenager up till today I said this is a millionaire signature and it's true when you look at it you ask her, what, is this, what is he saying yes keep declaring Keep declaring. Keep declaring. Keep declaring. You will see that uh, you not know how. There's a song, you may not know how, you may not know where, you do it again. You may not know how. Keep saying it. Keep saying it. Keep calling it. Things that are not the case, call them as though they are the case. And watch them come to pass one after the other. Fight your enemies. Fight your depressing thoughts. Fight your discouragement. Drive away discouragement and disillusionment from your life. By declaring. Don't fight without bringing faith into the picture. That's all I'm saying. Don't let, there's nothing too small for faith. There's nothing too canal for faith to be involved. You are not good at having sex. Declare I'm the best at this thing. Declare this is my speciality. In your marriage. Rando Rabaro Rabakasala. What you cannot do, declare I have it. I am, I am, I am, I can, I have. Every monkey spirit will not prevail over you again in Jesus' name. Lift your hand and thank God. Thank God for those things that be not. Oh, Tarabuka Labandarama. Oh, Dalimore Mandale Baba. Merenda Limonde de Bekebora and the Manda Shadu de Monde. Oh, Ramandala de 
Amarino le de le de le. Amamano le ge bale no le venare mo le 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 le. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amagaba. Your servant will not be disheartened and not be discouraged, Lord. Thank you for your blessing. Thank you for your power. Thank you that we call those things that be not as though they are, as though they are, and they are coming to pass one after the other, one after the other, one after the other. Ramando le bere le minole ma kabara no le bene shemara. Lift your hand, your ministry takes a new turn. Your career takes a new turn. Your dreams are coming to pass. When the Lord turns our captivity, then we are like them that dream. You are like them that dream. Makarata lo lo la 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 so mudalaba. Mashandole mamanda raba kamandaria bele de bele. We give you thanks. Partnering with God. Partnering with God. Partnering with the invisible power to conquer equally invisible powers that are deployed against you in the name of Jesus. Father, thank you. Give the people a spirit of listening to messages. For faith cometh by hearing. And hearing comes by the word of God. Give the people a spirit of watching videos and listening to preachings and reading your word and being filled with faith and encouragement. Give your people the strength to stop all fiery darts of the enemy. Give your children, Lord, the grace to overcome and overpower. All wicked forces launched against your children, Lord. Thank you for victory. Thank you for help. Thank you for your power. Thank you. There shall be no loss. There shall be no loss. There shall be no loss. Because of your goodness and your kindness. We give you praise. We give you glory. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank God what you couldn't lay hold on since the pandemic began begins to come into your hand by itself. Receive it now. What was lost from your hand all through the pandemic comes into your hand now by the power of the Holy Spirit. Receive it now in the name of Jesus, the Savior of the world. Father which art in heaven, I thank you. Orchestrate and guide all circumstances and events for your children to come into the goodness that you have determined and planned for them. I thank you that he who began a good work shall surely bring it to a perfect end. We deploy the power of faith and command mountains to be moved we command rivers to be crossed we command enemies that lift themselves high and exalt themselves against the word of God to be brought down low let the earth open and swallow up the enemies of the kingdom the enemies of the anointing and that so we call it so and we say so shall it be and so shall it come to pass for the enemies you see today, the Egyptians, you shall see them no more. For they shall descend into the pit that they have dug for themselves. Thank you for your power and for your grace. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And everyone said, Amen. As every head is bowed and every eye closed, you want to give your life to Jesus? Say with me, Lord Jesus. Please forgive me for my sins. I give my life, I give my heart to Jesus Christ. Please wash away my sins with the blood of Jesus. 
Write my name in the book of life. In Jesus name I pray. And everyone said amen. God bless you. If you pray this prayer with me, I want you to look on the screen. We have a number. And all, not only if you prayed, but if you are lonely, if you are sad, if you are not happy, if you are discouraged, ah, kramu sataba, call this number now and listen to this message again. You'll be encouraged and driven out of discouragement in the name of Jesus Christ. And everyone said, Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. What a blessing. Hmm.